Today we shall review two books I read in a row, so terrible I could not make a video on any of them separately. First, Garrett Garrett, i.e. Edward Peter Garrett, was an American journalist. He was born in 1878 in Pana, Illinois. Leaving his farm home in Iowa, he became a reporter, becoming specialized for financial reporting for various New York papers like the New York Evening Post. He opposed the New Deal and US involvement in World War II until Pearl Harbor, where he changed his mind but was fired for it. He was married three times, in 1900 to Bessie Hamilton, in 1908 to Ida Irvin, and in 1947 to Dorothy Williams Gowlett. He died in 1954 in Tuckahoe, New Jersey. Our first target today is his 1921 The Blue Wound. A man wanders into a newspaper office saying he knows who caused the First World War. He cannot say it in words, only write it down, and he writes for days on end before disappearing, leaving behind his testimony. The story concerns the man meeting a strange being who he feels is set apart from all other men and whom he calls Meret. This Meret, after escaping from an angry mob, promises the narrator a terrifying spirit journey in another time and place. He does so, showing him the origin of man and taking him all over the world, only to show him the same example over and over again, in all but identical guise, to hammer home two points. One, that buying others' labour is wrong, and two, that selling raw material for finished goods is also wrong. Chapter after chapter of these two same points repeated ad nauseum given us in a simplistic, childish manner as if we are too stupid to understand it otherwise. Ending in an insultingly simplistic black and white conclusion of economic isolation is good, international trade and bad. There is a vision of a future war between the US and Germany where the Germans develop atmosphere incinerating gas weapons with immense range, but as soon as it starts to get interesting, the entire book ends. The beginning and end of the book may be a bit more interesting, but the tedium in 90% of it is not worth it. Second, we have William Dean Howells. He was born in 1837 in Martins Ferry, Ohio, to William Cooper Howells and Mary Dean Howells, and is known as the Dean of American Letters. In 1860, he wrote a campaign biography for Abraham Lincoln, and then became the US Consul to Venice. In 1862, he married Eleanor Meade. He was a friend of Mark Twain and was an editor on the Atlantic Monthly for ten years until 1881. His most well-known work, the 1885 The Rise of Silas Lapham, followed soon after. He died in 1920 in Manhattan. Our second target is his 1903 Questionable Shapes. His apparition concerns Hewson, who saw an apparition of some kind at the St. Johnsworth Inn. That is all we ever get to find out in over 90 pages where it is mentioned all the time. Just that Hewson saw something. He talks about this at the club, but then he meets his obvious love interest, Miss Hernshaw, who believes in his apparition, but gets very mad when he tells people about it. Then she herself tells it to a newspaper reporter by accident. I have no idea why any newspaper would publish this great big heap of nothing, but they do, and then Hewson and Rosalie Hernshaw get married. This is just 90 pages of domestic fiction with the apparition being a plot device and nothing more. The Angel of the Lord has warned hope the psychologist bore us with the story of Ormond who lost his lifelong morbid fear of death, inviting chance tramps in for breakfast and laughing at bad poetry, before stumbling over a root and breaking his neck, assuming he had seen the angel of death right before. And if you need more of Warren Hope's waffling in your life, rejoice! For the last story, though one rose from the dead, is more of the same. This time, Warren Hope talks about the Alderlings and their ability to read each other's minds. That is, until Mrs. Aldering dies and the husband becomes morose. He thinks he called her back from the dead by sheer force of will once, but comes to believe it was a delusion, only to run his boat into the fog when he thinks he hears her calling in his mind and his body is never found. Believe me, there is enough waffle here to feed a moderately sized first world nation, so it is a lot slower than it sounds. It is better than the blue wound, but it's still so very static and boring. 